G'day listeners and welcome back to another episode of the Keeper League podcast. We're the AFL fantasy podcast that doesn't talk about the superstars. We only talk about the lesser knowns and the players who will bring value to your draft and Keeper League teams. My name's Hef, and on today's episode, I'm joined by Louis from the Pod Pod. How are you, mate? Good, thanks, mate. Good to be on my first episode of the Keeper League for the year, chatting about Richmond. It should be a good one. Now, are you as hungover as I am today or not? Yes, I am, mate. All right, yeah, good. that's good. why I was going to phone it in, but yeah. I've, um, <laughs> I've crawled out of bed and uh, yeah, I'm here live in the studio. Yeah. Podcasting on a uh, <laughs> Sunday isn't probably the best idea. No. I, had a wedding yes- I had a wedding yesterday. What did you do? I went to a couple of wineries oh, classic, and uh, you and your wine. free tasting <laughs> and uh, the guy just seemed to be keen on giving us a little bit of everything, so yeah. got carried away there. Nah, fair enough. All good. Uh, we're talking about Richmond today. We'll keep this short, sharp and shiny so we uh, yeah, don't drag on too long. Um, but uh, yeah, Richmond in general, you know they're not a great fantasy side. Do you want to explain to our listeners why that is, Louis? Well, they rely on pressure, mate. So yeah. they just want to get the ball forward, um, score at all costs and there's not a lot of chip-chip um, sort of style and... Uh, their list sort of lends itself to that as well. There's a lot of veterans on there that play a certain way. And um, yeah. while some of that may change with some of the youth coming through, I mean, they have to come through eventually. But um, yeah, at this stage, uh, Richmond for the last probably five, six years, probably since 2017, uh, just haven't been as massively fantasy relevant as some of the other teams out there. Yeah, for, and for that reason, we don't have really a lot of players to look at today, but we'll go through the uh, the premise um, of what we've been doing this season. So we talk about the undervalued players, which are players that are either um, have dropped from the usual standards or their average is probably less than what they could produce this following season. We've got breakout contenders, those younger players that fit the mold and are about to kind of transition into the prime of their careers. And we've got some stash options, which are players that that we think uh, are probably better off holding for the future and uh, waiting for them to pop, not necessarily uh, going big next season. So we'll get stuck into the show today. Um, the first one I want to talk about, Louis, is Dusty Martin. So his values at an all-time low. Do you think he can bounce back or what's the go? No, I actually don't have. I think um, the Tigers, uh, they've got a few people coming through the midfield now. They don't necessarily need Dusty to be in there. Uh, like his old bullocking self, and uh, let's be honest, when he is up forward one-on-one, uh, he does make the defenders sweat. He probably pulls some of the better defenders his way, and I think uh, just his ability to hit the scoreboard uh, has become more important for the Tigers with uh, with some probably some of the added midfield depth that they've yeah. um, they've put into their side over probably the last uh, 24 months. Yeah, that's something we're definitely going to touch on this show. We might leave it for the questions, but their midfield makeup looks very different at the moment. He's just a player that they probably don't need in the forward line. But considering that we need forwards in fantasy and they're hard to come by, he's he, like he's dusty. Yeah, you know, Brownlee medalist, exactly. three-time Norse medalist. He's still a player you're probably going to pick up but you're just not going to do it with as much confidence as you used to, I think. Well, if, if Dusty demands the ball, you're probably going to give it to him. So if he's inside that forward half, um, I think you're still going to be able to find a decent amount of the pills, sort of 15 to 20 touches. Uh, he's obviously not going to accumulate like he used to be able to. Uh, he's going to be more uh, impactful with his touches. But I do think as a forward, he's a guy that... Uh, you can be pretty um, confident in giving you um, at least a 70 week in, week out. Like I think his floor is always going to be relatively high um, just because of the player that he is and how talented he is. But um, yeah, he, he's a long way from where he used to be, which is why we're probably talking about him on this podcast. I'm sure <laughs> it ha- that hasn't happened for a quite a number of years. Oh, so yeah, it's B2, interesting B2P, to see me. Actually, well, that's why back to the podcast for those new listeners out there and usually something we're talking about on your podcast, the Pod Pod. But anyway, Dusty Martin, one to consider as a forward, just don't have high hopes. That's essentially it. Um, we'll talk about Jacob Hopper, probably one that people do have high hopes for. Um, terrible year last year with injury, but he's at a new club and probably suits his new club's style of play. He kind of fits into that Richmond system pretty well with the way he goes about it, that contested style of play. Um, what can you see in terms of averages this year? What's What are your thoughts? Look, he's never been a, a massively high averaging player, and that's because of the type of footballer he is. So he's very in and under, contested, uh, he's, he's not a massive accumulator and he's probably the guy that Trent Cotchin's passing the torch to. So yeah. I, I see him getting high CBAs and being a massive part of that rotation. And uh, because of that opportunity, when we have seen Hopper do that previously at GWS, he has been able to be a 90 to a 95 guy. And I think yeah. that's probably... 
uh, around the mark and what we can expect. Uh, I know Richmond's game style, as I said previously, doesn't lend itself to fantasy scoring, but a player like that, uh, and I've and I've spoken about this with Taranto, a player like that doesn't necessarily have to um, spread wide, get the marks, yeah, yeah. Uh, and do all that cheap stuff because he's he's a first touch player, so he's consistently ticking over the fantasy points. So I think um, Jacob Hopper, even being on this list, would be a fantastic get. I think he's going to have all the opportunity in the world. He'll be 2G4P pretty quickly, I reckon. I'm expecting like the high 80s, low 90s, like yeah, 85 to 95 average range. So I think we're pretty... So I have similar thoughts on that one uh, this year. So, yeah, you're forgetting the the scientific uh, rule as well, that the new club rule, um, always go bigger in their face. They always the get club. better, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they've got they've got a chip on their shoulder, something yeah. to prove you know, to the you, new coach. Yeah, Will so. Brody, yeah, you know, that last year, like, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's science. It tends to happen. <laughs> it's science. Uh, last one we'll talk about in the undervalued uh, list is uh, Tom Lynch. So, 75 average, I think that undervalues him a little bit for what he can put up because his ceiling is actually huge. It's unbelievable, yeah. yeah. On a on a good day, he can score big. He had four games over 120 points last year. The issue is he has lots of low scores, so he's a roller coaster. What do you reckon? Do you think he's uh, worth owning in draft leagues given we're going to be scraping for forwards this year? Um, what do you think? Yeah, I do. Uh, he's a player that gets plenty of marks, so he's someone that I'm relatively confident week in, week out can get five to six marks, which... Uh, is obviously what we like to see in building a fantasy score, and he does have that that massive ceiling. So when he does get on the end of a few, I mean, we've seen in um, certainly in AFL fantasy, he's been able to put up 140s uh, and make it look pretty easy and do it over a stretch of games as well. So to be able to have him as a forward, uh, he's potentially, even though he only averaged 75, uh, depending on the week, he's potentially a, a massive uh, weekly winner for you. Yeah, I oh, know, 100% agree. It's it's going to be a roller coaster. If you've like got the luxury of either um, loopholing him or streaming him, he's probably the way to go. But even if he has to be your last picked forward on the field, you know he's probably going to even push up to an F4 on some keeper league sliders, I reckon. So with that ceiling, he's going to win you a few games. So he's worth owning. But yeah, just not the sexiest name on paper for any kind of fantasy, that's all. No, but if you play the matchups, and we saw it last year, where I think he went on a stretch of about a 120 average over three or four games. Yeah, yep. uh, he's someone that if you can chuck on your field, uh, you could even throw, you know, a sneaky VC uh, on him, being that he's... Uh, plays a few early games. Yeah, like, plays yeah. the early games, certainly early on in the year. Yeah, um, yeah I, I quite like him as an option um, in keeper leagues, and he's and he's still in the prime of his career. Yeah, really is. Yeah, especially with Jack Rewell on the decline as well. He's probably going to get more used to. Um, we'll move on now to some breakout contenders. A player that fits the mould is Hugo Ralph Smith. So he was a big name, I guess, in the preseason last year. I think he debuted round one as well or was picked in the round oh, one I side. think he got uh, a game or two the year previously yeah, yeah. and then he was yeah, found his year. feet. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So but, yeah, basically he showed glimpses off the halfback last year. This is this is actually a little, I guess, something we need to talk about. But Jaden Short, I guess we're all thinking he's going to return to defence. Is that your I, I think so, yeah. yeah. With the two, two additions in there, it, it makes sense for him to move back. So he might stifle some of this happening. But what do you reckon on Hugo Rousmith? He plays the right kind of game for fantasy. Can he improve or do you think he's going to be a victim of the Richmond system, really? No, I think he can improve. Like As I said earlier, Richmond are looking for that next crop to sort of come through. And yeah, they need it. They've shown a lot of faith in Hugo Rousmith already. He was yeah. one that uh, got a little bit of hype uh, in the preseason and got a, a good number of games last year as well. Uh, went back to the VFL at times, scored well. Uh, I, I think he's someone who is only young, is going to be someone that we can stash away. And uh, we've seen that Richmond, even though they're not massive fantasy scorers, we have seen players slot back there like a Jaden Short, like a Rioli, uh, who have been able to put up decent numbers sort of in your 80, 90 range pretty consistently. Yeah, uh, yeah, like I said, he plays the right type of game. There's just, I don't know, well, you've got Rioli back there, um, you got Rao Smith, you've got, who's the other two that kind of roll through there? Is Baker can sometimes go yeah, back. Yep. There's like, there's a few that, I don't know, there's a few of the similar type back there. And I just, he is versatile too, true, so true. I wouldn't be pigeonholing him into that halfback flank. Like he was pushing quite high up the ground at yeah. times and he showed some glimpses um, last year that I, I think suggests he could be a quality wingman if he was given opportunity yeah, there yeah. too. Yeah, he plays the right type of game for that, that's for sure. Have to wait and see what happens. One to monitor the preseason, but he kind of fits the age kind of profile, the mould. Um, before we get on to the stash options, I just want to thank our friends at Manscaped. Uh, Manscaped have been sponsoring the podcast for over a year now. I think we're about a year. Louis, do you have any Manscaped products? 
I don't, mate. You wow. want to hook us up? Wow, I do need to hook you up. Yeah, I might need to do a bit of an order and uh, get you some. But uh, if our listeners out there want to be hooked up, then you know we've got the deal for them. They can uh, use the code Keeper Twenty at Manscaped.com. Get twenty percent off and free shipping on all Manscaped products out there, Louis. What a deal! That does sound like a deal. So yeah, if you're uh, keen to get involved and you support the sponsors, you support us. So yeah, Keeper Twenty at Manscaped.com, and you can get all your Manscaped goodies there. All right, uh, we'll keep moving on. But yeah, the stash options, that's what we're up to. So first one I've got is Jack Ross. So he probably fits that breakout mold probably a bit more, but I just can't see him doing too much this season. So I'm going to hold him for the future. That's my thinking. But last year he kept swapping between inside, outside, get a few CBAs one game, end up on a wing. Sometimes he can go forward, um, part of that kind of wing rotation that we're seeing a bit more of. Um, his final three games were good fantasy-wise, though. He had a 74, 76, and 86. But yeah, as I mentioned, those CBAs fluctuated week in, week out. And the midfield only got deeper. So what do you think? Is he any chance of doing anything this year, or do you think he's one we're just going to have to keep holding for the future? Yeah, hold for the future, and I'd even be cautious with that, to be honest, yeah, mate, same. because they've got a lot of the out. same type now. Um, he's probably more of a depth player with the acquisitions of Taranto Hopper, and then yep. you've got Jack Graham, too, who plays a very similar uh, sort of game style as well. Well, so. here's the next one we want to talk about, so let's, let's lead straight into it. Jack yep. Graham, what is, what's your thoughts on him? I, I think he's a great player, mate. I think he's one of those um, underrated midfielders that... Hardwick would really rate and want in that midfield mix just yeah. because of what he brings to the contest. So, is there a, is there a but there or an if? No, there's not. A, look, he's shown glimpses. So he's had games where he's had a massive ceiling because he is that big tackler, but he's yeah. probably not um, the biggest ball winner. So he probably sits around that sort of 20 to 24 touches yeah. uh, and provides that pressure in the midfield for their other stars to really sort of excel in there. Yeah. Uh, so is he one that you'd be looking at this year as a decent fantasy scorer? Oh, I or? think so, yeah, yeah, for sure. And okay. um, I'm not sure, does he carry the forward status into this year? I don't believe so. I, I'm really bad at checking this sort of but, stuff. But he year, may but... be someone who also picks it up. So if yeah. he does do that, then that's an added bonus because there will be, I think, a heavier rotation in that um, midfield mix. And he has shown ability to be able to uh, hit the scoreboard at times, but also to provide that... Uh, sort of forward pressure, uh, he's yeah. sort of a great player to do that. He does um, have that forward status this year, so that's pretty handy to have. That actually Massive, yeah. yeah. That actually puts him into a cal- recalculation for me. I didn't actually um, realise that. So, yeah, my thinking was just more of a stash just in case. Like, he was shopped around to a few clubs this year, like Port Adelaide. He actually denied Port Adelaide. I know Port Adelaide were keen, but he turned him down. Um, my thinking was that he might go to a new club next year and kind of really burst onto the scene at another club. So my thinking was maybe to stash him for the future for those reasons. But if you see him breaking in, I think as that, that forward status, you're right, gives him extra value. So, yeah, no, I might reconsider that one. It Could doesn't. Even, yeah. Mate, if he's coming out of contract, then quite often we see uh, players dig a little bit deeper and just somehow find a little bit better football when there's a couple yeah. of dollars on the line. He and should really be in the undervalued options, I think. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah for sure. With that forward up. status, absolutely. Yeah, didn't even think of that. Um, anyway, well, thank you for informing me and reminding me that he does have, indeed have forward status. Um, gold members, I want to thank them before I move on. Uh, the gold members, they're the ones who are on the top tier on the website who sign up to get all our bonus resources and premium stats. Uh, I think when this episode comes out, the Ruck rankings will have just have been released. Hope that's right. But if not, look Good luck, for them mate. next week. So yeah, well we got to do we do top thirty, <laughs> so it's not too bad. We've been doing uh, we've done a hundred defenders and a hundred midfielders so far. That's a nightmare. Wow. And we're about to do a hundred forwards massive. coming up as well. So um, yeah, bit of a bit of a pain, but uh, we'll see how it goes with that. But uh, look, there's some rankings out right now. We've got the breakout tracker up there. We've got all our drafty fantasy score resources, which include their scores and an analysis and analysis on each um, rookie each player taken in the draft, so you can check that out, um, plus a whole heap of other bonus content. We've got bonus episodes coming out at the moment. Heaps of stuff for the members, so make sure you sign up. But, yeah, the Goldies that uh, are our top tier, the ones who support the show the most, and a lot of them are familiar names each year, and they keep this podcast going. So thank you to uh, Matt LaPlau, uh, Michael Pace, Sam Yui, Joseph Cagney, Mark Miles, Shannon Jackson, Chris Dixon, Wayne Mickelson, Ray Barton, and Chris Golding. Thank you to all of those for your support. All right. Uh, oh, sorry. And if you wanted to sign up to that, there's a link in the description below. So uh, hit that up and uh, support the podcast so we br- keep bringing it to you each week. All right. We're going to get into some questions here now, Louis. So be prepared for some left fielders. <laughs> At Toddman84, he asked, does Sonsi get into the best 22 with the off-season moves? 
Look, he probably becomes a little bit more fringe than what he has than what he was at the end yeah. of last year. But Agree. that being said, uh, he showed plenty as a young rookie. Uh, he may have to bide his time and just do a little bit of homework in the VFL. I think he'll come in uh, at times uh, and be given opportunity, but uh, he's probably more of that pure midfielder at this stage. And yeah. uh, I just don't see him getting as much opportunity as probably what we'd like. And uh, yeah, so he's you're sort of banking on potential at this point. Yeah, I agree. I think like if he does come in, it's probably going to be a lot less. Like he did get a little bit of midfield time last year. It's going to be a lot less of that and more up forward. But I think as well, like he was that type of player that worked off the forward line into the midfield, you know what I mean? Like they didn't necessarily tend CBAs, but they pushed up to the contest and those sort of things and become like that extra number there. So he's good for that sort of stuff if he does play. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I kind of agree. He does become a bit more fringe and you might not see him as consistently as he did at the end of last year. That's all with him. But uh, yeah, we'll have to wait and see with that one. Um, we talked about uh, we talked about Short going back into defense, but at Taser 87 us. Yeah, does Short get a bump with the likelihood he goes back? We'd both say that's a yes, um, definitely. And does it? If he does go back, does that bump down Vlosten and Rioli? Vlosten was the other one that I was forgetting before when I was talking about the defence. So, yeah, what are your thoughts? Um, Vlosten and Rioli go backwards with him back there. I, I think the load does spread out a bit, yeah. uh, as we said. There's not a heap of fantasy points going around in that team, so. Uh, somebody like Jaden Shaw, the ball user that he is, they're going to be looking to get it in his hands uh, fairly often back there, and I think that's just going to slightly knock back probably all three a little bit. Yeah, no, nah, I agree. It's going to be a more spread of points, but because he's the main user, like he'll take the kick-ins, we're playing each time, and he's still the one that they kind of direct all their traffic through as well. Short's going to be the one that's using it back there. Um, but anyway, it's unfortunate for the owners of the other two because uh, they were handy. But I think Rioli's value drops anyway because he's not a forward anymore, like he was a forward last year playing defence. Yeah, as a sole forward, a sole defender, sorry. I'm not sure if he's uh, as valuable back there. Um, yeah, we talked about Vlosten's value, so we reckon that, that drops. That was the next question. But uh, Kang Daddy's asking, um, Trent Lego Hair Cochin, is he 2G4P? He got he got back to the mark, I reckon, last year in some of those games. But um, we talked about the midfield kind of changing of the guards, Taranto and Hopper coming in. But he wants to know, will he spend more time forward or back and get dual position? Um, and will he do the complete the fairy tale and come back to relevance? Or will he fall off the cliff and stuck and suck, sorry? And um, he says, keep up the great work, you stallions. So it's nice to be called stallions. It is, yeah, it is. Yeah. See, that's a tough one, mate, because Trent Cochin to me is very much a pure midfielder. Do you, do, he could go forward, he could go back. Which one do you think uh, he'd be more suited to? Because they're yeah. pretty stacked. I think if he goes defense, anywhere, he and goes that's forward. probably where I'd put him. Yeah, but he's not a great forward either. So he's one that's going to be tough to get a read on. He might uh, sort of play a bit of a similar role to what we saw and what we probably will see again. Travis Boak play yeah. uh, where he goes into that guts and plays, you know, thirty percent, and then sort of sits on that half forward flank. Yeah, I think he he would do the pressure stuff really well. Yeah, but he wouldn't be like you know, kicking flashy goals or anything like that, snapping them from the pockets and things like that. But he would do the defensive pressure stuff, do jobs on players pretty well on that forward line, I think. I, I agree with you. I don't see him in defense because I think it's pretty stacked. don't think it suits his style of play, Like, but I think he could do like a really good defensive job you know, on a damaging halfback or something like that. So if he goes anywhere, I can be forward. I still think because he's such a senior head, though, he'll still roll through the midfield. He'd probably just be highly rotated. Yes. Like a lot yeah. of bench time and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, he'll probably, probably be, um, yeah, his time on ground, I yeah. think, will take a bit of a hit. So for that, I think he goes backwards, unfortunately, even though he showed glimpses when he was kind of back to being the main man in there last year. With the new midfield additions, I don't think it's going to be good news for him. Um, yeah. Um, I think we've talked about everything else on the questions list. So we might wrap it up there. Louis, what do you want to plug? Where can people find you on Twitter? Uh, they can find me at Louis AF and, uh, of course, on the Pod Pod, Point yeah. of Difference uh, podcast. Uh, really ramping up now. All the preseason games, training reports, everything's starting to uh, there, yeah. come across the feeds. And uh, we love talking about it. So, yeah, get, get involved. And, and you used to be behind the paywall, but now you're out free on the open air. Totally free Everyone now. Can so, to you all uh, it, it'd be rude not to, to have a listen and uh, see how we go. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a great podcast. Uh, the chemistry between the four of you blokes uh, is great. Not to mention the fantasy advice as well because you've got well, three guys who know the game and, and you've got Dossie as well. <laughs> 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 oh, I love you, Dossie, if you're listening. Uh, but anyway, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, get around us on our socials uh, at Keeper League Pod on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and TikTok. Uh, make sure you support Manscaped using that code uh, Keeper20 at Manscaped.com. 
And if you wish to support the podcast further, please sign up as a membership and uh, help us going forward. All right, Louis, thank you heaps for your time on this uh, hungover Sunday afternoon. Thanks for and having me, mate. I think we did pretty well uh, despite being a little bit slow today. I think it was a great episode, to be honest. But, uh, yeah, we might have to try to get you back on the pod a few times throughout the year if you're, if you're happy to come on. Yeah, well, I'm yeah. only down the road, mate. Exactly, if you live around the corner, both uh, Port Adelaide walked. locals. Yeah. yeah, definitely. All right, uh, we'll leave it there. Thank you, listeners, and we'll talk to you soon. See you, Louis. Bye.